Welcome everyone to this uh, IAVI webinar. I'm in, based in the UK, so it's my afternoon, but I'm sure it's morning and evening uh, in various parts of the world, wherever you are. You're all very welcome. This uh, webinar um, this afternoon is entitled Adding Value to What You Do and How You Do It, the Role of Brand in the Volunteer Sector. And we're showcasing again the plenary presentation that was part of the very successful IAVI World Volunteer Conference held in Abu Dhabi in October last year. At that stage, it was a plenary presentation and there was no availability to ask questions from the uh, participants. And there was a lot of interest in this particular presentation and people felt that they would value hearing it again and indeed having the opportunity to ask questions of our expert presenter. So today we have the presentation followed by an extended Q&A time. What I would encourage you all to do is to please put your questions in the question and answer box. And um, you know, as we go through the presentation, so don't wait till the end of the presentation, um, put them in as thoughts come to you. And then at the end of the presentation, add your questions and then we will move straight to the Q&A. Our expert presenter today is Nuna Abru, founder of Slash, and he will be talking about the strategic role of branding, the frameworks to get it well done, and how a strategic thinking approach supporting the brand exercise can be deeply transforming to an organization. Nuna has close to 30 years experience working in the creative industry developing projects globally, starting in Europe, then Africa, the Americas, Asia, and the Middle East. His, new, his company Slash is headquartered now in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. But Nuno also has many years of experience in the NGOs world, and especially in the volunteering field. And I know he is an active volunteer himself. And being a designer for almost three decades, he has wondered why most volunteering organizations do not invest more effort in their brands. The answer is that most look at it as a tactical element and nice to have, most times based on someone's taste and not something strategic, a tool to perform better as an organization. And he clearly believes that the role of brand is, can be very important and also can be very effective. So we're delighted now to welcome Nuno to make his presentation. And please keep bringing those questions forward. Thank you. Nuno? Thank you, Wendy. Uh, and, and thank you, everybody, for being here. It's a pleasure. Um, I will uh, share my screen to start my presentation. And we'll take you through. So apparently, Jessica, there's some issue with me uh, sharing the screen, maybe from my computer. If you have the presentation, maybe it's faster for you to share. If not, I'll try, but there's some issue here from my side. Okay, I will share from my end. Okay, sorry. So as Wendy uh, mentioned, um, so that's that's the last slide. Can you go to <laughs> to the beginning? Um, yep, that's that's it. Um, so um, Wendy already did a, a very good introduction. Thank you, Wendy, for the nice words. Um, uh, as a compliment to my. Um, to the, my introduction. Um, I was born in Angola. I was raised in Portugal. I lived most of my life in Portugal. And um, uh, the UAE is my home now for more than 10 years. I founded Slash, a strategic design studio, um, with my wife. That, by the way, and uh, uh, very uh, has a lot to do with the volunteering world. Uh, I met my wife on a on a on a conference, being a volunteer, a uh, long long time uh, ago, um, and we founded Slash almost thirty years ago, as Wendy mentioned. 
Um, even knowing that Slash was founded in Portugal, we have been traveling with the studio around the world uh, in uh, in many, many places. And we landed uh, in Abu Dhabi as our home um, uh, almost 13 years ago. Over the next around 19 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, probably the main question that a lot of you uh, might ask is why are we talking about branding in this context? Uh, as I hope you'll see by the end, the brand of your organization has a lot to do with how efficient its perception is by your audiences and how you convey your passion and your work. So if you're in a hurry and by some reason you can't stay until the end, spoiler alert, the role of branding in the volunteering sector should be to help define and communicate who you are, what you stand for, and above all, why you exist. And this on its own is already um, a big ask uh, for this presentation, but especially for the role of branding, because I believe that that's not how most people see uh, branding in the volunteering world. I think the first thing that comes to, to people's mind when we talk about branding is uh, everything very visual. Um, and when we talk about deep things, um, like who you are and what you stand for, it's not immediately associated with. Them. So over the, this, the time of this presentation, I will be as helpful and as tangible as I can, aiming at giving you information that you can use tomorrow, today, um, when you are back at work doing what you do. Next slide, please. What we all know, most of you by experience, is that one of the biggest challenges in the world of volunteering has always been to communicate well, to reach out to many different audiences effectively, to be heard above all the noise. Whether it's attracting volunteers themselves to the initiatives, finding partners for fundraising, or reaching those we are trying to help, making sure the right message is conveyed, at the right time, in the right way, has always been a massive challenge. Next slide, please. At the same time, we also know that communication has changed a lot in the last couple of decades. When I started my volunteering career in the late 80s, we had brochures, we would print flyers, posters, we would do photocopies, and we would just talk to people about um, our initiatives. Then some years later, the web came and websites became the, the way of doing uh, communication in the volunteering world. And today, almost no one goes to a website anymore. Almost everything is based or relies on social media. And we don't know what comes next, what will be the next communication tool for, for ourselves. Communicating well is key in the world of volunteering. And unfortunately, most of the time this is left to the end. Even knowing a lot of you have professional teams working on your brand and communication. Next slide, please. Traditionally, it has been something that some designer, eventually a cheap one, a friend or a cousin, someone we know, that takes care very quickly. Next slide, please. And one of the main reasons for that is that we all think that social good on its own is good branding, that it's enough. But is it? The fact that what we're do, you are doing, we are doing, is great, doesn't necessarily mean that your audiences are getting it. And a lot of times, a brand based on goodwill can forget to compete in quality. Being social and sustainable won't be a valuable differentiator forever. You need your own narrative. But you also need to tell your own story well. So how do you do that? And for that, let's start with the basics. Next slide, please. The biggest misconception about branding is that a brand is its visual identity. It's, it's the logo, it's the symbol. Next, uh, click. I'm sure that you have heard this many times, but here it is again. A brand is not a logo. And 
we we i'm sure you know someone in the design area in the branding area i i i know you have heard this before but we even knowing that this is said on and on and on i think in the end every time we say the word brand there's an immediate associated with a symbol with a logo with a brand identity next slide your brand is mostly how your audiences relate with your organization, your initiative, or your event. And that feeling that will lead to actions or not is totally rooted in how you communicate who you are. As someone in the design field once said, a brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, a service, or a company, an institution. A brand is not what you say it is, a brand is what they say it is. And this is probably one of the hardest lessons to be learned when we're doing branding and communication is that we believe that when we are in our studios, you know, uh, doing the perfect uh, brand and the perfect communication, that everybody is going to get it the way that we did it. But a lot of times that doesn't happen because the perception on the other side is different. And obviously your brand is only as effective as it is perceived. And that obviously becomes a massive, massive challenge. Next slide, please. If these guys change their logo tomorrow, if Apple changes their logo tomorrow, I will still buy their phones. I will still buy their computers. They are one of the most valuable brands in the world, not because of their logo, not even because of their great visual identity. Next slide, please. They are valuable because how people feel about them and how people feel when they use their products and their services, how people feel when they experience their brand that goes way beyond their visual identity. If tomorrow Apple starts an hotel or a bank, People will immediately go and open bank accounts or stay in their hotel because they will immediately benefit from the brand loyalty that they have today. A lot because of how people feel about their brand. How did they get there? Well, by being very clear about who they are and being very, even extremely consistent in how they communicated over decades. And obviously, this is applicable to many, if not all brands, including a lot of NGOs and charities. How many times did we do, do we see people rebranding just because they think that the new logo or a new visual identity will solve all the communication problems? When we look at the consistency of long-lasting brands and how they didn't rebrand for many years, we realize that it's not by changing necessarily a logo or a symbol that we are going to solve those communication issues. The, the issue is how people relate with your brand. And that is something that we would like to address today. Next slide, people. Next slide, please. So there are many people that spend years preparing to launch a new project, a new initiative. And they think because the foundations, the why of the project is great, that the next day everybody will want to join. And then that doesn't always happen. You need to fill in, and can you click please? You need to fill in in the space between your projects and your audiences with your brand. You need to make sure people have access to your story. And a lot of times this space between you and what you do and your audience can only be filled by the brand, by the communication, by how do you communicate who you are and what, what you do. And a lot of times we don't do that. Next slide, please. The good news is that all of you have plenty of what makes a brand successful a clear purpose. That is the key element for a successful brand. Surprisingly, after all these years doing branding around the world, we still find many entities that when asked why they do what they do, they don't know their purpose, or at least they don't know how to communicate it. Also, from my experience in this field, almost all organizations in the volunteering sec sector not only have a clear purpose, but they are very good at communicating it. There's a lot of ownership and proximity, proximity 
to the narrative. And almost everyone close to the organization are able to, in their own world or in their own words, tell its purpose. And this is something unique in the volunteering world. Um, you know, a, a lot of times in when we, we relate uh, with the commercial world, with, with companies, we find that most of the, the elements of a company, most of the members of a company, they can't communicate the why, the purpose. But when we get to the volunteering sector, almost everybody is there because they are connected with the purpose of the institution. And that makes it so much easier to then reach to the next step. Next slide, please. In our methodology here at Slash to build brands, purpose is at the beginning, the fundamental element where we start from. There are a lot of elements uh, that are necessary to find during the discovery stage, like your audiences, who are you communicating to, who are you serving, your KPIs, KPIs, how are you going to evaluate your success? But the purpose is the fundamental stepping stone. It's the heartbeat of your organization and your team. As a more friendly and easier way of taking you through these steps, I'll show you how this process led to the branding of the volunteering conference that happened here in Abu Dhabi some months back. Uh, this is not going to be fair to my strategy and design team, and uh, I don't know if any of them are attending this webinar, uh, because they spent months designing uh, the, the, you know, almost 200 slides of the concept presentation, plus the and other months developing uh, the brand. But in the next just few slides, we will try to explain how we went from purpose two brands, and we hope that this methodology can eventually help you in your, in your work. So when we start our methodology and we start with a purpose, one of the things that we like to start with is a narrative. And the reason for that is that, as I mentioned before, in this sector, in the sector of volunteering, usually people are very good at communicating the narrative. That's something that it's, it's there from the beginning because Everybody knows why they're doing what they're doing. So narrative becomes a, a very good starting point. So over the next slides, what I'm going to read to you is the narrative that led then to the key concepts and then to the brand. So next slide. Um, and uh, Jessica, you can, as I read over the next sentences, you can just click to the following slides. The conference will be a gathering of world changers and difference makers. Next, a connection point and common ground for people separated by miles, but united in the shared passion of purpose of and, and purpose of volunteering. A place of dynamic collaboration of those minds, ideas, passions, and energies meeting and moving forward together. Being inspired and inspiring each other to recognize the power of volunteerism and celebrate the impact it represents. So the brand purpose for that event was to be a place of connections, to facilitate collaborations, to inspire impact while representing the best of the UAE culture. As you know, this event happened here in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. Next slide, please. So, Obviously, these were just five slides that that led to the purpose of the conference in in itself. Um, but when we when we move towards creating a brand, one of the things that we realize is that the purpose a lot of times is not tangible enough. So the way that we follow our methodology is to trying to step by step making the intangible tangible. So what we want is to start from the purpose, which usually it's a narrative-led narrative, a narrative -led, um, component of the brand, but not very tangible. Then we come to something that we call the strategic guiding principles. Look at these guiding principles as the foundations of a building. Yeah. So when you are building a building, and in this case, the building would be your brand, um, you need strong foundations. If you don't have those foundations, what ends up happening is that, you know, the building might collapse. And unfortunately, a lot of uh, one of the main reasons why um, 
a lot of times brands collapse is because they don't have strong foundations. They are just um, taste exercise. They are just, you know, oh, I like, I don't like, I like this color, I like that shape, my friend like better this, my boss like better that. So one of the things that we kind of try uh, uh, to do to um, uh, make sure that the visual component of the brand is not a, a taste exercise, but it's more um, uh, a synthesis of something that it's much stronger is to create these strategic guiding principles, these key concepts, if, if you want. And the key concepts for uh, the conference, for the brand of the conference were, uh, next slide, please. So the first one is an honest ambition. We are here to make a difference and we are here to change the world. We stay proud in this vision and always change, chase ambition over apathy. Next slide and next key concept. Ignited from the outside. Our brand, the brand of the event, is a vibrant expression of every individual story, an organization that comes to the conference. We are an activated human expression. Next key concept, calling all to action. The brand is ignited by our people and it is a tool for our people. It represents volunteers, adds value to them, and most of all, calls them to action. Next key concept, with a smile. Underpinning volunteer work is a passion and energy to make a difference, and we aren't shy about recognizing the joy and fun in volunteering and the conference moment. Next one, which is the last one. Proud of home. We're proud to welcome people from all over the world, and even prouder to ground them in the spirit of Abu Dhabi and the UAE. Not to boast, but to humbly promote the best of our national culture. Next slide, please. So if you remember, we started with the purpose, with the why of, of the, in this case, the conference, but let's imagine is your institution, the institution that you, you work for. So you start knowing exactly why you do what you do. Then we make that tangible by creating these pillars that are kind of verticals that will support you know, your communication, your touch points, you know, how, how things come to practice. And only after we're going to talk about logo and visual identity. So um, this next step uh, is another step towards tangibility, making the brand more tangible, making the purpose more tangible and creating tools to bring your brand, your purpose to life. The brand touch points and experience. Where will your brand live? Most of the time, people focus on communication, and that is an important touch point for most of you. But what about people? What about physical spaces, your products and services, the events you run? Each of these is a representation of your brand and an element that conveys who you, who you are. We face a lot of times the big mistake of leaving people in the organization out of the touch points. There is no effort to brand them or use them as a fundamental channel to communicate your message. How do, do they dress when they represent the purpose in an event? How do they verbally communicate the story of your organization? Everyone in your team should feel they own the brand and add to it. But make sure you have a brand leader, someone that owns the brand as one of the main responsibilities. This person should be in charge of the big picture, creating it and adjusting it over time. This is the person that is in, char in charge of motivating the rest of the team around the brand message and getting them engaged through inspiration and strategy support. So one of the things that uh, is hard in this road to tangibility of the brand and is to define what are the touch points of the brand. And basically these are, imagine that your brand is your hands and see the touch points as fingers. So you need these fingers to reach out to achieve your, your goals. So the common touch points are communication, for example, is, is a big touch point of, of, 
of your brand. Another one, as I mentioned, is people. And people, a lot of times, is left outside of the brand exercise. A lot, a lot is space. For example, if you have a, a space where your brand lives, where you communicate, where you exercise the purpose of your organization. Sometimes could be products and services that, that you provide. All of those are fundamental to bring the brand to life way more important than it is your your logo um so the the these touch points are a place where we need to, to always spend time working around the brand so if i if a space is going to be important for the work that we do, we need to spend time understanding how the brand will come to life in the space and with the people and, and with the communication and so on. Most of the times uh, we spend most of our time with one touch point, which is communication. And communication becomes kind of the focus of all the organizations. And then we end up having a very unbalanced brand because there's only one touch point that is developed. And then a lot of times we end up forgetting the other ones. Next slide, please. One of the elements of bringing all these touch points um, together is with the experience. And experience is something that only in the last year started being focused for a lot of people. A lot of people realize that when someone attends an event, when someone attends a space, when someone um, interacts with an initiative that, that you are organizing, um, people re a lot of times realize that things don't connect. We don't connect the dots. So, for example, for the conference that we uh, uh, um, branded here in Abu Dhabi, the volunteering conference, we realized and we studied the whole experience from before the conference during the conference and after the conference. And obviously, don't ask me how successful this was because we our job was, was to bring this plan. Obviously, the execution uh, had a lot of people involved. But we wanted to make sure, if you remember in one of the key concepts, we spoke about connecting and about collaborating and about inspiring in between the lines and what we wanted to make sure uh, can you click uh, jessica uh, please um what we wanted to make sure is that all the pre during and post moments of the conference would connect in these three layers of the brand the connection the collaboration and the inspiration and we would create moments for each one of them during the whole experience and one of the fundamental uh, elements to for a brand to succeed is to think how that brand is going to live in every single step of the experience and in every single touch point of that experience next slide please so as you as can you go back sorry it was a click uh, yes so as you can see in the bottom we also went through the main touch points during the experience so that we would understand how the brand would live in those touch points so this is kind of to help us create a checklist um for the development of the brand so we we wanted to make sure that when we are doing the brands and we are doing the synthesis which is the next step we would develop a brand that would be useful in the website in the invitation in the registration moment for the speakers and when i'm when i mean the speakers i mean the screen and the presentations that were behind the different spaces and so on next slide so finally, the logo, the, the visual identity. We have defined our purpose. We have articulated our guiding principles, our core values, if you want. We have understood where these will come to life. With all that defined, then, and finally then, we can talk about what is actual, what this will look like the verbal and the visual identity. Synthesis is the living logo and the codes. And there's the narrative and here is the narrative that led to the visual identity of the of the conference so this was the uh, the narrative for the logo of the conference next slide uh, please so if you uh, again uh, jessica as i read it if you can help me clicking over the next slides volunteers work to make a difference they see problems, issues, people missed by the normal order of society, and they work to help. 
In a world so nicely defined, volunteers color outside of the lines because that's where the need lies. Seeing a need and giving of themselves to fix it. Not because they have to or because they will benefit from it, but because they understand the impact of their actions. Volunteers are the abstract human movement defining their own impact. It's passion, emotion, humanity, and collaboration. A beautiful balance of organization and raw energy. Every volunteer, a dynamic expression, the difference we can all make through passion and action. So when we were doing the brand and we wanted to bring this narrative uh, through to life and remember that the pyramid, the inverted pyramid is a journey towards um, uh, being uh, tangible uh, in, in, in converting the why into a brand. In that journey to be more tangible until we reach the logo, we realized that there were um, two, uh, there was a tension that would lead to our brand. One is that we would want to have impact through organization. And again, we're talking about the conference that has a lot of moving parts, that is a, a complex uh, puzzle of different elements to bring it to life. And for that, it needs organization. But also we can't forget the theme of the conference, which is people. And, and uh, the other side of the tension is impact through humanity. So the way that, that we did that, next slide please, is converting the impact through organization into structured component and another one through a human component. So we wanted to make sure that our brand would have these two elements that would kind of uh, represent the tension that we were talking about. Next slide, please. So for the structural element, what we did was to create a grid, uh, the, the square, if you want. There was this module that, that started from the square and then would create the grid. And, and the symbolism behind this is that we do have a lot of moving parts. We, we do have a lot of different components. We also have a lot of different people attending and participating in this conference. But we wanted to make sure that all of this would be structured within the organization. Next slide, please. And the way that this would come to life was through the logotype itself. So we would have this dynamic brand um, that would be made out of um, um, uh, squares. And uh, as you're going to see after, or, or you, may, you maybe saw during the conference, there were different ways of showing the brand, the, the use of the squares. But we, we looked at the logotype as the component of the structure. Then the next slide, please. We got the, the V. And the idea of the V was the human component. So, if, so the squares, the boxes, the grid was the, the, the impact through organization, through the, the, the component uh, of the structure. Um, and then the V was the element of the human. So we had many different Vs. And the idea was that they would be handwritten so that we bring even more that, that element of the human impact. Next slide, please. So when everything would come to life, it would be uh, with these two components. So we would have the structure, the boxes, the squares, but we would also have this dynamic element of the V, the v that would bring the, um, the human component uh, to, to the brand. Next slide, please. And then we would have to create uh, several uh, different uh, versions and dynamic versions. Uh, can you click? Yes, because we were um, doing the conference in the Middle East and we had to have, uh, we had, uh, we needed a second language. So we added another box. But in reality, when the brand came to life, this was a dynamic brand that could live in different, uh, in different ways. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So um, to wrap up um, uh, the, the, the presentation, um, 
you could use this framework to evaluate and ev eventually improve your brand. It's yours to take. Uh, um, this is open source and, and I'd be more than happy uh, to have you using it. And over the next uh, uh, minutes of the, the Q&A, feel free to ask questions either about the process or about uh, you know anything that, that you want. But the idea is don't forget is that we always start with the purpose. Uh, next, uh, Jessica. So we need to define, you need to be able to define your purpose. And I'm pretty sure that almost all of you, if not all of you, uh, have done that exercise. It's something that in, in the volunteering world is very common that people know why they do what they do. Next. Then once you take care of the purpose, you focus on these guiding principles, these, uh, these uh, pillars, these verticals that will help you define how that purpose will come to life. Next. Then you need to think about how will the organization bring that to life? What are, uh, what are the touch points? What are the elements where the brand is going to live? tangible elements so so the daily in the daily operation of the organization and then finally next please you focus on on the logo on the on the on the brand uh, uh on the visual identity and on the um on the different codes the colors the fonts and and all of that but my main goal with with this presentation is to make you understand that without a strong purpose, without a strong narrative, without a very strong strategic narrative, and a very strong understanding on how and where your brand is going to live, your logo is completely useless because it becomes a taste exercise. And that's, that would be the last thing that we would want for an efficient, for an efficient brand. And next, we're done. Thank you so much for uh, listening. Uh, to my presentation. I believe, Wendy, that we have Q&A. Yes, we do indeed. Um, we do indeed. You know, and thank you very much for that. Uh, I unfortunately missed your plenary at the conference due to other uh, to the business of the event. So I'm really delighted to have seen it to have seen it now. And I must say, the build up to brand for the conference really resonates with. Hello. Is it just me that lost Wendy? Um, no, it's not just you. I think Wendy's internet might be unstable. Okay. Um, so I will. I can kick us off with a question from the audience. Um, Neon Park um, asked, um, thank you for the webinar organized and presentation. It was very helpful to reflect. Um, my question is in the mostly resource type volunteering sector, what would help branding in the most effective way? Um, strategy building and branding take time and resource and I believe many organizations struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you are, if you, if you mean, you know, hiring a strategic, a strategic consultant, uh, that most of the times is very expensive, and uh, uh, um, yes, that's that's complicated. But my my experience is that pretty much anyone in the volunteering world can take time to design their own strategy. I think, as I mentioned before during the presentation. Um, uh, it's one of the few sectors that I have worked with uh, during my career that everybody is very clear about their purpose. Now, the conversion of that into a strategic narrative, in the, into a strategy might be a challenge, but I don't think uh, that it's uh, something that it's uh, out of reach. Uh, I think there are, um, you know, a lot of... Um, 
frameworks and the framework that I just shared uh, is one of the, one of those examples but there are many available frameworks that can help you do that in-house so yes if you have the resources and you can hire a strategic consultant um, that or advisor that can help you great but if if you don't have those resources I believe it is possible to do in do in-house it's uh, it's just uh, you know following some kind of roadmap uh, uh, that that uh, that can help you to, uh, achieve that. And uh, the, 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 the framework that I shared is a good example of that. Sometimes the hardest part is to start, is to kick off that exercise, that strategic exercise, um, uh, mostly because you might not know how to do it. It might become, uh, you know, a challenge how to kick off. But... Um, my experience is that by trial and error and and constantly uh, trying to improve that strategic exercise you can you can reach that so my answer is that you can do it even with limited resources today you have you know the whole world available uh, online um my advice would be try to find the framework of design thinking, uh, something that will support that strategic exercise uh, of, of coming from the purpose uh, to these guiding principles and then uh, making it more tangible. So um, I think it is possible. Uh, I think it's quite open source to do it, to do it today. Next question. Uh, apologies. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I'm I'm really sorry. You know, I seem to have an unstable internet connection, so I've had to move to uh, my my phone. So I'm no I'm assuming that Jessica has uh, has taken forward the uh, the questions. The first one, yes. And which one was that? Which one was that, uh, Jessica? It was, um, it, was, it was from me on Park. Um, she just asked about, you know, volunteer sector organizations and, um, you know, with limited resources and budget, how they can go about um, with the branding process. Um, and so, um, Wendy, do you have the other questions in front of you or do you? Want I have to... a couple more. Yes, I have. And then, Jessica, maybe you could, um, I'll, I'll do the two I have. And then if you could follow up with the ones that are there. I do apologize for this, but it's technology. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the questions I have was the difference between organizational mandate and organizational branding. And I think you did touch on this as part of your presentation but maybe you could be a bit more specific about that. You know, this one comes from Undral in Mongolia. Mm. So branding is how people perceive your organization. It's not your visual identity, yeah? So the visual identity is just a tiny component of the branding. Um, a lot of times uh, that confusion leads to people uh, focus too, too much in, in how things look like, and they forget how things behave, how, 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 how people are perceiving the organization. So I think that the organization's mandate is way more important than the organization's visual identity, but the organization's mandate is the organization's branding, in my, in my opinion. So the way that when you say the name of the organization, so if you say, let's say, I have it, if, and if you say, I have how people what what comes to people's mind, you know what is their perception of that institution? That is the brand of that institution, not the visual identity. Because I can guarantee you that if I have it changes their brand tomorrow, they will not change who they are as an organization. Yeah. So the the visual identity is just a tiny component of how the brand comes uh, comes comes to life. Now the 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 purpose. And the reason why the organization exists is, is, is a, the fundamental part of how it comes to life. Now, how people see your organization ends up being your brand and then becomes sometimes a very unfair um, game, if you want, because what ends up happening a lot is that, you know, there's some event, there's some PR problem uh, that sometimes can can damage a lot the perception of a, an organization to the outside and 
eventually damages damages the the brand um because again the brand is how people perceive uh the institution more than how it looks how the the brand looks um so for me it's very important that people understand in in the branding world that the brand is not the visual identity. The visual identity is just a tiny component of the brand. And the brand is how people feel about your organization, how they engage with your organization. Okay, thank you. And then I have one question, which is a little bit more uh, attached to the resources question. Um, and it's from Carter in Hong Kong. And he's saying that organizations spend you know, more resources probably on marketing um, communications as opposed to brand communication. And mm -hmm. his question is, how do you build a good brand through marketing communications? These are all, these mm -hmm. are all challenging questions, you know. <laughs> so marketing, marketing is very tactical. Yeah, so marketing is, um, you, you have a specific goal, you have a specific um, uh, you know, initiative, a specific uh, um, uh, goal, as I mentioned, that you want to achieve. And marketing is eventually a tool to help you reach that. Branding should not be seen as tactical. Branding should be seen as strategic. And, and I think that's where a lot of times the confusion happens because a lot of times people push branding to the tactical and they believe that branding is going to help solve a specific tactical problem, like for example, someone attending to a conference or you know having a specific fundraising happening. That's not the role of branding. The role of branding is introducing who you are and what you stand for. Marketing as the role, as the tactical role of achieving something very specific. So when I use the example of, of the conference, the role of branding was to create a brand that would motivate uh, uh, people to understand the role of the conference. But then the organization, IAVE and, and uh, the partners in Abu Dhabi had to do marketing to get people to come to the to the conference. So the marketing was more uh, of a tactical a tactical tool. And I think there's there's a, there's a, there's a, a big, big, big misconception about about the difference between uh, branding and, and, and marketing. And then in terms of resources and use of resources in, in these two things, I believe that, that the investment in branding is similar to the investment on your headquarters or in hiring someone. Again, is a strategic component of your organization and should be seen as a strategic component. It's an investment. I think the budget on marketing, a lot of times as the organizations that mix and they merge the, the budget in branding and marketing. And, and for them, that it's almost in the same bracket within the budget for the organization. And that's a mistake because that is devaluating the value of, of branding. I believe that marketing has to be seen as I have a specific goal and the goal is to raise funds, is to reach out to new members, is to help in a specific campaign or a specific initiative. And that is very specific. And, and the, the, the brands can support that marketing effort with the strategic components. So for example, the guiding principles. One of the, one of the things that we recommend a lot of times, if you remember the triangle, the inverted triangle that I shared, the second element was the, strat the strategic guiding principles. And one of the recommendations that we do to our clients is to tell them, when you're going to launch um, a campaign, let's say a marketing effort, a lot of times people sit, uh, sit around the table and they start brainstorming and they say, okay, so we need to invite people. We need uh, to, to, to uh, you know, reach out to people for them to come to a conference. And then they sit and they start brainstorming and giving ideas about how they do that. And they rarely, if ever, they go back to the brand and to the strategic component of the brand. They just start saying, oh, the best way of bringing people to the conferences online and we need to do this and we need to launch that campaign. And that becomes a mistake because the brand loses completely its strategic role in defining the marketing effort. So what we always say is go back to the strategic components of the brand. In this case, you remember we had five uh, verticals uh, in in the in the in that strategy, and make sure that those 
five pillars are in some way seen or felt in the marketing effort. Because if you do this, this, this exercise of always starting from the strategy to go, to go to the tactical, what you will create is something incredible, which is consistency, which is one of the things that the volunteering world lacks a lot. Uh, when you go and you check a lot of the volunteering organizations' campaigns that they launch, it's it's a constantly up and down, you know, it's almost like one campaign has nothing to do with the other one and nothing to do with the other one. It's always jumping around. And the reason is because there's not a very st uh, strong strategic component supporting the market marketing efforts. So for me, the first thing to, uh, to understand is that brand is strategy and marketing is tactical. These are two different things. But the technical tactical component should always start from the strategic component. You can't start uh, brainstorming on marketing just with people around the table discussing how to reach a certain goal. You need to go back to the brand and make sure that you are bringing to life those 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 uh, strategic elements. And and if you do that effort in the beginning, it's tough, either because those uh, uh, you know strategic components, key concepts are not defined, and then becomes very hard to bring to life something that you didn't define. So you need to define those strategic efforts. And sometimes it's also hard because less, uh, if you don't have uh, practice doing this, uh, you know, bringing strategy into life sometimes is tough. And, and I recognize that. So there's a, there's a, you, you need a, um, a process uh, to, to reach that. One of the ways that we do that is to use that element um, that I mentioned in the in the strategy, which is the the touch points uh, and the experience, and you can say, okay, so what are the touch points that I'm going to use in a specific market marketing effort, and then you you go back to the strategy element and you say, okay, so how can I bring this strategic element into this touch point? How can I bring this strategic element into this touch point, and and so on? It's a tough and painful exercise because sometimes it's not one to one. It's not something that you can say, oh, this one I reflect this way, and this one I reflect this way. Sometimes two of them can come together in a, in a specific touch point. But you know, as as the saying goes, no pain, no gain. Yeah. So <laughs> if it was easy, anyone could do it. Uh, thank you, Nuno, for that very fulsome response. I have two more questions here. Um, one is. If you have a a brand as a you know a, as, as something that you can see, so it's a logo associated with your brand, um, is there an expiry date for that? You know, I think the question's probably around refreshment. Um, not not necessarily. So it's not an easy answer because some brands are really expired and they should be rebranded <laughs> but uh, but a lot of a lot of brands now so you have good examples like coca-cola is an example of a very old brand that i'm pretty sure a lot of times people felt tempted to rebrand or levi's or i don't know apple is as an example that that we gave that they could they could eventually at some point i'm sure someone said let's rebrand them there's not a, a easy answer to say, yes, after X amount of years, you need to rebrand. Um, a good brand, in in my opinion, in my practice, a good brand is a timeless brand. I, I, I avoid at all costs um, to do trendy brands, um, to follow a certain trend. Uh, you know, like there was, a, there has been this movement over the last uh, almost 10 years of the hipster branding. Yeah, so you, ha you have this, coffee shops and all these, uh, you know, cool brands that, uh, you know, everybody follows because it's it's kind of an easy way of doing branding. You even have these websites that sell these brands, you know, for $20. And, um, and if you follow a trend doing your brands, you are immediately setting an expired date because the moment that the trend ends, your brand ends because it was a brand that was made uh, during a trend. So my first advice is that you avoid the temptation of creating a trendy brand uh, and try as much as possible to create a timeless brand, a brand that it's not of a specific moment, a brand that 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 uh, should last for the next 50 years. Um, and a lot of times it's not easy to get that approved. 
with boards and and you know like presidents and so on because people again associate branding with marketing and because marketing is tactical and it's trendy they want a brand that will support that but a good brand in my opinion uh is a timeless brand not not a trendy brand if you can do a timeless brand then there's no expiration date I'm not saying that you might not need to tweak here and there over the years, you know, and just improve a little bit, uh, you know, um, but but you don't necessarily need to, to rebrand. Um, I would say that the, the, you know, rule of thumb, if there is one for branding, is, is the brand that I have still representing uh, my positioning and uh, representing, uh, representing who I am, you know, um, is, is the brand that I have still helping me achieve the communication goals and the strategic communication goals that I have. Um, and again, we need to avoid the temptation of, um, of confu confusing the brand with, with the marketing because you can have a trendy marketing campaign. You can have a marketing campaign that uses the current trends and languages but your logo that goes in the corner of that campaign doesn't necessarily need to be directly associated with with the campaign yeah um and that this this separation between strategic and and tactical is one of the hardest things for most of the the teams uh, to do in fact one of the biggest mistakes in my opinion and now maybe i'm going to you know, step on a lot of people's toes <laughs> is to put branding inside the marketing department. I think that's a big mistake. I think that's a big mistake. I think branding should be at at the, at the level of the board. That should be at the level of the, you know, of the owner of the institution because branding is who you are, is your strategic, uh, um, your strategic positioning. It's who you are as, as you as an institution, what you do, how do you do? And marketing is tactical. You want to achieve something. And I would say, without knowing any of you in maybe in this in this call, that most of your organizations have branding inside the marketing department. And I believe that's a mistake. Okay, thank you. Now we're running out of time, and there is one question that um uh has come up and actually it's a question that I'm also interested in hearing the answer to you know so and it's about volunteers we're talking about a volunteer sector and the one thing that that uh, um, you, you know makes that is the fact that you're involving volunteers in your work in and taking forward your purpose so the question was about the volunteers owning the purpose and therefore aligning themselves with the brand and the other side of that question that I'm interested in is how do you, organizations, I think, often leave the volunteers out whenever they are actually starting to even look at a branding exercise. So what do you think the answer to that is? How you, can you uh, get volunteers to live the purpose and how can you get the organization to actually involve the volunteers whenever they are thinking about brand? That's 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 a great question to finish the, the 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 webinar because probably that's the the secret sauce yeah for the for the for the volunteering uh, world. I believe that volunteers are at um, a key touch point of the brand. I don't think they are an audience. Yeah. So I believe that in the volunteering world, without volunteers, there's no volunteering world. So it is pretty straightforward. So if we think that they are an audience, we are removing them out of the structure and we are looking at them almost as a consequence of the branding. And if you bring them up as a, one of the touch points, immediately you are involving them in, at the strategic uh, level. Volunteers should be brand ambassadors. So they shouldn't be a tactical element, again, as marketing, that they just show up in that day and they just do that, that element. They should be people that are um, at least most of them. I know that depending, sometimes we're talking about something with five uh, volunteers, sometimes with 5,000 volunteers. And obviously it's very different one thing from the other. But I believe that volunteers should be brand ambassadors. They should believe in the purpose. 
they should join the efforts of bringing the purpose to life. Um, and they should be involved in the process of being uh, trained uh, for the purpose to being those ambassadors. We have done here in Abu Dhabi, several brand ambassadors programs with volunteers where we take time to take them to, through the strategic component of the initiative, more than just the tactical component of the initiative. I've seen a lot of initiatives, and I think a lot of people in this call might have gone through that, where the volunteers are just informed directly about their tactical uh, role and say, you need to do this, you need to do this, you go there, you behave like this, and so on. Rarely, people take time to say, you are here because, you know, the purpose of, your, of you coming here is, you know, the why of this organization is, the why of this initiative is, and a lot of times we 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 make them just a tool of the of the of the um, of the implementation. Um, I have been volunteer for you know many many years, and I've seen and I'm sure you all know this way better than I do. I have seen a change in in the in the reasons why volunteers um, uh, engage with with events and organizations. Today um, uh, they are very demanding. You know they have a lot of they have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, um, opportunities. They they are exposed to a lot of things. So, in my experience, it's becoming harder and harder to involve volunteers. Um, and also, in my experience, the more they know why they participate in something, the more they want to participate. And then there's a long-term effect of that, which is loyalty to the organization and loyalty to the initiative. Through a good brand strategic effort comes loyalty to the organization because they know why they are connected to that organization and to that initiative. And then we go back to the element of branding being a strategic element and not a tactical element. If all the brand does to the volunteer is giving him a nice t-shirt, that will not lead to, to loyalty because there's someone else that's going to give them a better t-shirt. You know, and 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 they are going to go somewhere else. But if they know that they're coming to support this organization and this effort, if they know what's their role and their their critical role in that, what will happen is that independently of the color of your T-shirt, independently of the nice lunch box that you are going to give them for the event, they will still be connected to the why of the organization and the why of the initiative. And I believe. Um, we, this could take us to another couple of hours just discussing uh, how brand can impact in, in reaching out to volunteers and keep them. But I would say that we need to move volunteers from an audience to a touch point of the brand. And we need to make sure that they are a part of the organization, that they feel themselves as a part of the organization, even if temporarily, even if it's just for a moment. But they are not just there to fulfill a tactical component, but they are there as, in other words, give them ownership, which is something that rarely or, uh, volunteering organizations give to the volunteers. Thank you, Nino. And we've run out of time. In fact, we're over time. But I think that was an excellent response to, as you say, a very challenging question, one that might lead to another webinar, who knows? But I'd like to say a very big thank you to you for sharing your expertise. There's been lots of very positive chat and remarks from the audience this afternoon. And, um, you know, people clearly have enjoyed it. So thank you for your time. I would uh, just point out that Ayavi is running another webinar a global webinar on Tuesday, March the 7th. And this starts our new series for this year on youth volunteering, focused on youth volunteering. And this webinar is about youth volunteering, employability and sustainable livelihoods, exploring the role of the corporate sector. And as I said, this year, there's going to be four webinars on youth volunteering. And we hope that you will join us on the 7th of March and then join us for the other three, taking us to October uh, 2023. So thank you again for all your um, for all your participation and for all your questions. And thanks again to Nuno for a really, really great session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.